if there is one person who can talk to you about resilience, it is a published author. You see, I have yet to meet a published author who got first published by the first publisher he or she submitted his or her manuscript to. It took three long years of either not hearing back from a publisher I submitted my story to or getting rejected before I held my first published book in my hands. When you write, you put a part of yourself out there to the world. So getting rejected, you take that rather personally. I now have 10 books for children published by four highly reputed publishers in India. And yet, every time I send a new story to a publisher, I have this fear in the pit of my stomach as I hit enter, as I hit send on my email. You need a truckload of resilience to become a published author. I feel like a qualified professional here talking to you about it. And I can say with absolute certainty that if I were not resilient, I would not have even one book out in the world today with my name on its cover. So what is this resilience? Quite simply put, resilience is the ability to bounce back, to get back up. There you go. There you can see Garfield's world, words right there. I am 43 years old and in all those years, and I stress the word, remember when I was your age, I thought 40 was ancient and it's not. But in all those years, I can, con I can convincingly tell you that there are only three constants in life. The first is change. And you will hear this a lot as you get older. Change is a constant. Why? Because things are constantly changing. Technology is getting updated even as I'm talking to you here. The second is waves. Have you ever noticed how when you are at an ocean, waves continuously come at you one after the other as, as though it was a program on loop. Waves keep coming, waves are a constant. And the third, things not going according to plan. And that's the one I'd like to talk to you about today. I am here to assure you that things will go wrong in your life. I am here to assure you that things will not go according to plan. So if you want to plan your life to meticulous detail, or if you want to wing it, or if it's anything between these two extremities, I can still assure you that things will not go according to plan. Things will go wrong. If you can accept this fact early in life, then you will automatically learn to be hopeful, flexible, and adaptable. I call these three the first cousins of resilience. My favorite ever quote is by Albert Einstein. And he said, it is not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but rather the one that is most adaptable to change. Adaptable. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. While I was preparing for this talk with you, I tried to think back in my life for my first lesson in resilience. There were many examples, but one that immediately came to mind is the one that I'm gonna tell you about. When I was 18 years old, I got my driver's license for my dad's kinetic. There, that's what it looks like. That's a kinetic. Um, it's an auto geared light two wheeler. It had a grip on the right hand side to accelerate um, and brakes, that's it. It was easy to ride um, and easy to zip around on the by lanes in crowded Mumbai. There were no laws enforcing helmet usage at that time. Yes, I'm that old. And it was quite a heady feeling to zoom around with my hair flying free in the breeze. Um, my dad um, in the backseat strangely calm as I was recklessly accelerating. On one such day, as we were riding the bike, um, a black and yellow taxi pulled out onto the road. I didn't anticipate the taxi and the taxi tipped us over and we fell down. Um, none of us were harmed. To those who care about vehicles, no, not even my dad's bike. But my dad calmly stood up, dusted his trousers, picked the bike up from the road um, and told me to get back on and to ride. When I said, what, no? In a no-nonsense tone he rarely used with me, he said to me, you will always fall. Come on, let's go home. And I got up, dusted my jeans and got my 18 year old self back on that bike and I rode it home. 
that right there was my first lesson in resilience in the very literal sense of the word. When I fall down, I'll get back up. Not if I fall down, but when. Coming back to where you are in your lives, you may have already faced a few setbacks yourself. Maybe your first heartbreak, maybe your first failure at trying something new, maybe a, a lower grade than what you were anticipating in a subject, maybe a, a, a serious fight with a good friend or a family member. I'd like to clarify that you would be surprised at how many of these setbacks adults face in varying shapes and forms in their lives today. So it's not just a middle school thing, it's a life thing. I'm no guru, but I thought I would tell you how I deal with setbacks in my life. I first acknowledge my feelings. I think it is so important to validate your feelings. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was, um, I find when I look after my physical body, I'm so much better at coping with what life has to throw at me. By physical body, I mean, if I eat right, if I sleep, and if I exercise, I feel I'm much better able to deal with life's twists and turns. Exercise for me is yoga and taking my dog for long, brisk walks. But you'll have to figure out what is exercise for your body, what you need. Um, the other thing that really calms me is meditation. I try to meditate every day. Uh, but hey, life doesn't always go according to plan, right? Um, but the two, the two main strategies, the two big strategies I use to cope with setbacks in my life are, number one, to focus on what I can control. So if we're using that example that I gave earlier of getting into a serious fight with a friend or a family member, um, maybe you should ask yourself, um, can I control the behavior and actions of someone else? No. But then maybe you can ask yourself, can I control how I react to someone else's behavior or actions? Yes, most certainly yes. Whenever I face setbacks in my life, I always like to take a step back and ask myself, what can I control? Because quite often that helps me determine how I move forward, what my next step is from there. The second strategy I always use is the power of yet. Yet is a magic tool to have in your box. As soon as you say, I'm not there yet, you are halfway there. Look at that example of getting a lower growth grade than what you were expecting. All you need to do is to say, I'm not there yet. Yet brings effort. Yet brings hope. Yet brings brighter futures. Yet shows that you are poised for growth. The power of yet is what took me through all those rejections from publishers. Um, before I got published, I just had to say, I just said to myself, I am not a published author yet. Resilience is a powerful tool, one that gets easier to master with constant awareness and with practice. It would be my dream if in the future, middle schoolers like you would use the adjective resilient to describe people rather than pretty, cool, awesome, or funny. Because truly life with its unanticipated curves and twists is a much smoother journey to navigate through with resilience as your compass. Because another strategy that I use to navigate through my life is humor. Let's never underestimate the power of humor. I always say that life's too short to not laugh. So here's what I'm gonna end with instead. While I was preparing for this talk, I called a friend of mine uh, to give me ideas. And he gave me loads and loads and loads of advice. Um, and he ended with, but Nalini, do not forget, talking at a TEDx kid, kids event is a huge honor. I agreed with him. And then I said to him, I agree, but it's only an honor if it goes well. If I bomb, it will backfire. To which my friend replied, don't worry, Nalini. If you bomb, you'll bounce back. Thank you. <laughs>